We continue in this series where we master track, we previously compose, arrange and mix in two previous shows. So what's happening is on the first show I actually compose the tracks, I write the melodies, put all the elements together and make about the two minute template with it which you can find for each track on this mastering series of course. And then on the second part I do arrange and mix the track and on top of it I did put in a couple hours like literally on every track to make them really release ready track. So this is like a special track this is like a synthwave track that i think for mastering we will have really have to do something special so the mastering part of this track will be i think as important as the composition has the mixing and the arrangement like mastering this is synthwave we want to give it some character so basically 104 bpm the track of course 96 color 32 uh, 32 bits 96 kilohertz and it's 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 a it's a track that has already some chunks that has some groove a lot of brassy sound a lot of like big kind of things some nice melodies and with mastering we really gonna try to bring it up to another level give it some extra character I'm thinking not big distortion but something warm something chunky you know something that has really really a groove added to it with the mastering process of course this template will be available on our site we make dance along 5,000 other dot templates we're actually closing on 6,000 sometime probably in the next couple of months and this is what's happening right now all the artists are uploading if you're a producer you should upload some uh, templates to our site or some if you have a label and you have some sounds you're selling upload with marketplace it's really easy to upload and sell and get paid check it out guys we make dance music and then we're gonna start by having a bit of a listen to the track I'm gonna drop the monitor go into the headphones here so you guys can hear me talk So it is synthwave, but it is breakbeat bass, it's not a 4-4. I want it to be a little bit, you know, let's call it original. I'm gonna forward it a little bit right here. I missed this lead here, so let's listen. When I was uh, actually arranging and mixing this track, I was listening to the new album uh, from The Weeknd. And this is really the sound that he is going for on a lot. There's even a drum and bass track and stuff. And I was thinking, okay, this track is good. I have to push it to, I would call it the commercial level. Of course, there's no vocals in it, but it is still a viable track to lay some vocal on, you know? And of course the template, this finished template is on our website, of course. And the first part where I actually just composed is also on the website for only five bucks, so... Let's bring it forward a little bit. This is the second melody. This is actually an 808 bass, like a big thump that I play in the higher level. And this is what it is, it's just a big, like, clean sine wave. Record it and play that in real time original episode of this so all right guys so this is the track we're gonna work with today the first part is to do some uh, some gain staging here so we're starting let's I'm just gonna pick a I'm gonna try to get a loud, loud part of the track I think right here is good this synth is, is Another important thing when you're mastering, guys, I want to give some tips, you know, for, for some people that are less experienced or that want to learn. There's always something to learn. And I know that my tutorials are not structured, but this is the way that the workflow is, you know. I mean, I know some people are crazy. So me, I'm going, I have the chain set. I'm going in my years. I'm going with the feel. There's no mathematical equation to either making great music, mastering great music, or just being creative in general. So this doesn't exist. There's a way that you can gather the energy to push onto creativity, which I am working on for many, many years now. So I am able to be creative consistently, which I actually wrote like a full piece about it. And anyway, I did a video about it. If you want to watch, check out on the YouTube channel somewhere. So 
Yeah, let's let's continue, and we're starting by gain staging with this Renaissance EQ here. I want to make sure we have some gain. We got 3.5 dB of gain so far, and then if we're clipping, there's an auto gain here. So if we're clipping, it's automatically gonna drop, so it's really useful. Then we're going again into this VQ VEQ4, which I will start boosting a little bit the lows. I will compress them a bit later, but it's not this much. But I want some, like about probably 3 dB. So this is a replica of an old school EQ. So the way it is altering the frequency is completely different than other EQs. So I also use it for phase. Put it out here. So we already uh, are a little bit loud. That's a sign that the mix is good. When the mix is good, you really don't have to. So if everything is even, there's nothing standing out and it's not all over the place, you can easily get some loudness. So we're already at minus 13. So we're gonna work more, definitely more on some character than some uh, loudness here. Step it up here with 2 dB of gain with the L2 Ultra Maximizer. Did it show? Oh yeah, it is showing already. Then we're gonna go into a linen B to get everything tight and straight. This is the first step. I'm not gonna apply a lot of processing. Couple dB. Make sure our chain is clean. No clipping at any stages. So what I've done, if I boost the bass here, this will already reduce it a little bit. So. There's a way to you boost a little bit and then you compress to make it chuggier instead of just simply compress, compress, compress. If you boost, compress, boost, compress, you're able to thicken, I would say, the sound in a way that's not gonna be achievable in one step. It takes a couple steps to to do something like that. We're going into after a linen B, we're going into an API 2500. I like this plugin mainly for the lows and the mid lows. It has a nice effect on thickening the bass and it, it has a character that's very unique. This is why I use it on most, if not all, the tracks that I master. Without. With. It's gonna hear it a bit more here. With. Without. It's somehow this doesn't touch so much of the top end while the SSLG, SSL uh, channel main compressor will alter like the whole track seem to be more glued. This one, more of the low end. This is why we're using it, just to glue. Keep on... Uh, the output is good. Then we have the SSLG channel, which I will not use for this track. I don't want a clean sound, I don't want the character of it, so I will move on. This, I will definitely go a little bit mental on the side here. I want the track to feel big, to feel spacious, to feel... I don't think I can go much further than this. Make sure I'm not clipping. With, without. With. Without. With. So... This, so I, I give you an interesting comparison. So see the, the loudness here? I'm gonna go back to there. So the loudness, it's about minus 14. If I put that on, we barely went up one dB or maybe a little bit, but it seems so much, but so much louder. And then when we're gonna apply compression to the signal, it will even tame it down and you're gonna have that presence and that loudness, maybe a little bit less. And that stereo field is super wide, it's really, really big, big, big. We're dropping that straight onto a Kramer tape, guys, and this I will use, but not abuse, but I will definitely give the tape some juice to clip. This is intentional. We're going into the red here. So I want the percussion, I want everything to be just 
vibrant and thick and present and a way to achieve that is you saturate with the tape that also creates some harmonic, harmonic distortion in a lot of the frequency including the lows the mid the highs and it just i don't know this is this is what makes some track really shine and even knowing that we have this loudness now and this presence already in the track we still have 13 db of, of, of gain to to go so i want on average around minus 10 like the other track that i'm mastering for this compilation edm session be out on beatport they all go around minus 10 so i want to keep this and we're going straight into an ssl comp which we will use you know not, not abusively about 4 dB, 3 4 dB of compression. So, going out of this into this, the signal is hot. I mean, we're really, really going hot. You can hear it, it's compressed. I mean, there is there is some, some chunk into the signal. I like it. Then, I'm not sure if I will use this for this particular track. We're gonna give it a try. I don't think it's necessary at this point, but I'm gonna give it a try. This is really to tighten the track, really make all the things really nice, harmonious, and they all correlate and stuff. But what we want for this track is just to be chunky, to be big, so. gonna use it ever so slightly so I like it a tiny bit you can see you gotta get like it db and a half 2 db of, of compression on there it's very very little well it's not this is, it's not literally compression but uh, almost okay and then we finish this mastering chain with the granddaddy or the grandmommy the l316 to have uh, you know commercial commercially you know acceptable loudness and all the track will have about the same loudness like I said it's about for our track but minus 10 so I don't want to push it too far I'm gonna bring it up already so see we already have all the loudness we need we barely need to put another maximizer at the end Barely two. Oh, I'm a little bit too loud somehow. So I'm still gonna give it one dB, one and one point two, because I like this this thickening. This what the limiter does to a signal you know it's it's most of the track are like that and then with the brass is very big the server field is really there this piano is sitting well everything is there guys we get the loudness here i wouldn't do much more so let's have a listen to this track now that uh, we have all the elements in and you know at this point it's it's a listening session to ensure that everything is okay we're not clipping anywhere in the signal we have to run the whole track to the whole the whole program or track or song call it to the chain completely so we're gonna know if we output it it's not gonna be clipping anywhere in between the plugins so let's go
keeping the plugin that can clip, the other ones are not gonna clip, so. Super nice so far. I, I don't hear any issues with the sound. The chain is really flexible, and will the, the multiband processors do a very good job? So it's more about the track preparation, the mixing, all the elements, and of course, when you master your own track, it's a bit difficult to not be biased. But there's been many, 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 many like what. <laughs> quite many years that I mastered my and mix and master my track and I, I just know how they feel and I know what I need to do to them and this is the step that I can skip so if I work on other people track there's most likely a lot of EQ involved and some tricks and stuff on my track I mix them to be mastered this way so it's definitely an advantage but if you need some track mastered you can go on a site we make nice music we get good services Quite a try guys, I think we did well on this one and that, oh oh, I see clipping here. And that is it guys for episode 86 of the EDM session. Get ready between episode 90 and 99, I'm preparing something special. And of course we're gonna celebrate episode 100 with something even more special or bigger. Hopefully we're gonna get to uh, get out this summer, maybe not, who knows what's gonna happen soon. Keep it up guys, be strong and of course may the sound be with you guys.